On a balmy May night in Quebec City, the final seconds count it down on the Kitchener Rangers' 40th season. The Rangers hide the odds, now the reigning kings of Canadian junior hockey. Darroy became only the second Ranger captain in team history to raise the Memorial Cup, one of the most difficult trophies to win in all of sports. The talent and sweat of the players, the planning and commitment of the organization, and the loyalty and faith of the fans had at long last been rewarded in a season of destiny. As the 2002-2003 season began, the Kitchener Rangers had three goals to shoot for. It would be the ultimate team hat trick. The Rangers have six players averaging a point a game this season, the most in the OHL. The Ontario Hockey League regular season is a six-month, 68-game marathon. When the 20 OHL teams reached the finish line in March, Kitchener led the pack with exactly 100 points. The Rangers had been victorious in 46 contests, losing only 14. Walk around him, Boucher scores! It's second of the hockey. Only once before had a Ranger team achieved the 100-point summit. Goal number one was accomplished. The Kitchener Rangers finished atop the Ontario League regular season standings. Just that simple. Goal number two would require 16 more wins, four rounds of playoff series. By Leclerc. To the slot for Smith winds up. And it gets behind him, and the Rangers score. Evan McGrath. A, but outmatched Sault Ste. Marie Greyhound squad was swept aside in the minimum four straight opening round matches. Radu opened a new chapter in the bitter Highway 7 rivalry. The Guelph Storm were playing their best hockey of the season as the Rangers won a hard-earned 5 series victory. Andrew Penner stood on his head, the Guelph Storm gave it everything they had. I'm to just, they, they, are, they cannot be faulted. Here is Richards, his shot. The Plymouth Whalers brought Kitchener to the brink of elimination in a gritty seven-game Western Conference Final. Man, this place is going crazy. Under 10 seconds to go in this hockey game, and listen to this crowd wild. Team depth may have been the decisive factor in the league finals against Eastern powerhouse Ottawa 67s. On an emotional night, the Kitchener Rangers hoisted the John Ross Robertson Trophy and we're now Ontario Hockey League champions. <laughs> the hat trick was completed in historic Quebec City, North America's oldest and most beautiful settlements. Under the glare of the national media spotlight, a highly focused Ranger squad went undefeated. A 3-0 round robin capped off with a 6-3 victory over Hull in the Memorial Cup Final. The Memorial Cup was on its way to Kitchener, where Ranger mania was running wild. At a hastily organized reception the next day, thousands to Kitchener City Hall to welcome home the bleary-eyed heroes. <laughs> Guiding us through the events that shape season of destiny will be Don Cameron, the legendary voice of the Rangers, and the team's leader, head coach and GM, 
Peter DeBoer. Even as a team, the Rangers have proven they are the best team in junior hockey. Congratulations. <laughs> The seeds of Kitchener's sweet victory had been planted in bitter defeat the previous spring. Peter DeBoer, two-time OHL coach of the year, had been hired by the Rangers to make a ninth place team competitive again. A fine first season under DeBoer and associate coach Steve Spott had Ranger fans dreaming of a return to the glory days. That'll be it for the hockey game. Dustin Brown. Then came a shockingly abrupt first round sweep at the hands of arch rival Elf Storm. Well, it was mixed emotions. You know, I think we were we were very happy with uh, our season uh, for the first season uh, that we were here. Uh, it was an evaluation season for us. Um, I thought uh, to get 80 plus points. I think it was the first time in years that uh, the team had been over the 80 plus point mark. Uh, was a great accomplishment, and uh, we had a great second half to the year, and really carried a lot of momentum coming down the stretch. Uh, and then had a very disappointing playoff, which kind of uh, tempered everyone's enthusiasm a little. But uh, I have no doubts in my mind that uh, that, that loss led, led to future successes because it really taught us uh, what the main weaknesses of them were, and, uh, and we went out and tried to address those over the summer last summer. While construction crews got an unexpected early start on major renovations to the Kitchener Memorial Auditorium, Peter DeBoer and the Ranger Brain Trust looked to remodel the Rangers. Their first move was an off-season trade that would prove to have a profound impact. Popular center Ryan Rand was dealt to DeBoer's former team, the Plymouth Whalers, in exchange for a rugged winger named Gregory Campbell. It's always uh, when a trade such happens, coaches on both sides will say, this is a trade that's going to help both teams. And it, it is situations where it did. Ramsey, uh, you know, Ryan Ramsey is an outstanding hockey player, fine young man, and the fact of the matter is he did not want to be in the show of Derek Roy here in Kitchener. The problem was the shadow got longer. Derek Roy was going to be the one center. Michael Richards was going to be the number two center. So the ideal situation, rather than have an unhappy player, is to make a deal, and the deal was a good one for the Rangers because the coaching staff, Peter DeBoer and Steve Spott, they were familiar with uh, Mr. Campbell and uh, Gregory Campbell came in. I think they anticipated a solid two-way player who would have some offensive contributions to the team. But I think he went beyond that. And I think he was more than even uh, the coaches expected. And the roll through the giveaway, Scott! Gregory Campbell, short-handed goal! What no one could have expected was the hockey chemistry that would take place when the Rangers combined the dad genius of center Derek Roy with the superior strength, positioning, and hockey sense of Greg Campbell. Over on the near side for Roy. Sends in front, Campbell shot, scores! Greg Campbell no, you, don't, you never foresee that. Uh, I think the time they played together was at the uh, World Junior Selection Camp last August. Um, it was right around time that we made the trade. And, uh, and both of them played well together. Um, Mark Habscheid, the coach of that team, had thrown them together for some inter-squad scrimmages, and they really see some chemistry right off the bat. But uh, um, I think Gregory's a guy that, that uh, can play with just about anyone. Obviously, he was ecstatic to play with a player of Derek's caliber. Over for Roy. It's, <laughs> it's remarkable because Gregory Campbell, as you and I both know, and a whole lot of people know, he is not the noisiest player in the world. Very quiet, uh, uh, get down to business kind of thing. And for whatever reason, it's, again, it's no rhyme or reason, but you put two players together and bang, they just uh, hit, uh, hit it off hand in glove. Derek Roy. The formula was simple. Mix number 14 with number four, add ice. The result was a hockey partnership that would last from training camp to Quebec City. Another major story also began in the offseason at the National Hockey League's June draft in Toronto. The Rangers' timely gifted defenseman Steve Eminger was chosen 12th overall by the Washington Capitals. Now, when you were drafted, there was a fair uproar in the stands. You got a pretty good contingent. Yeah, there's about 120 people here, so I heard it too, and I heard it pretty loud. It's, it's like uh, it's like a, when the Leafs score. So. Now, what does this mean for Steve and the Kitchener Rangers for next season? 
Uh, it's just kind of wait and see. I think um, another year in junior would be uh, would be perfectly fine. I think I think there's no there's no rush rushing players into the NHL. And if Washington's going to think that's the best place for me, and I would I would be perfectly fine with it. At training camp that fall, the Capitals liked what they saw. Eyebrows were raised around the hockey world when Washington announced that the 19-year-old Eminger would be staying a while with the big club. It's always a little bit of a shot uh, uh, and a shock when, uh, when someone of that caliber that you have penciled into playing your team uh, isn't returned. And, uh, um, you know, you don't replace guys like that, uh, arguably the best defense in the CHL and uh, a 20-goal scorer for us the year before, a guy that plays against everyone's top lines. But that was a, a big blow to the Rangers because it was an area that I think they felt he'd be back uh, shortly. Then it started to be maybe he won't be back till after Chris, and then it was maybe he won't be back at all. And without him, there's no question in my mind that I don't think the Rangers would be uh, holding uh, court now with the Memorial Cup at their side. Steve Eminger is that good. With Eminger in Washington, the Rangers now looked to third-year players Marcus Smith and Andre Benoit to form their top blue line. The puck is bouncing. Benoit, Benoit, a converted winger, seized his opportunity for all it was worth. By the end of the regular season, Andre Benoit was the OHL's top scoring defenseman. He developed into an outstandingly uh, simple defenseman. Take the man to the corner, don't have to kill him, get cleared out. Join the rush at the right time. Scored 20 goals as the defenseman. Smart on the power play. Uh, you know, he just had a, he had a career year. Not to be outdone, Marcus Smith also blossomed into a touch all-round defender. The Phoenix Coyotes draft choice emerged as a punishing physical force on the Rangers blue line. Marcus Smith, uh, he's, uh, he's a horse, and that's a compliment, Marcus. Uh, he's a horse because of his hittings, of uh, the ability he has to lug the puck out of the, out of the zone. I think that's as big as anything. He can, he, uh, he's quick on his feet, and he, he just uh, want, love to play the game. You know, he seems to love to play the game. He le loves to get involved, and uh, I think uh, he's got a, a bright pro future. The full value of Marcus Smith would be made clear in the conference final against Plymouth. Without the injured Smith, Rangers were life and death to win the series in seven games. Early in the season, Ranger management took the trade route to further strengthen the team's defense. Disgruntled overager George Halkidis was rescued from the floundering Saginaw Spirit. He wasn't so much struggling, but he was with a team that was in disarray for a number of years. Moving to Saginaw didn't make, uh, didn't suddenly turn it into a great hockey team. But George came in and I think he looked around, he, he saw people like, uh, you know, Andre Benoit and Marcus Smith. And he looked up front and there's Derek Roy and Gregory Campbell and Michael Richards at all. And uh, he said, boy, I can, uh, I can have some fun here. And, and winning is fun. If you really look at the whole playoff picture from every angle, game in and game out, not just solid. George Halkidis may have been, because he played all those playoff games, may have been the most consistent of the Ranger defenders. So kudos to the Ranger staff for making that move because Halkidis, he, he, uh, he just came of age and he came of age as an overager and again, another piece of the puzzle that made it all. Right place, right time. Still another piece of the was added a week later when David Clarkson, a bruising and boisterous winger, was acquired from Belleville. Kitchener still working it around nicely. Here's Roy in the slot. Team passes. They score! Look at that! David Clarkson in his first game as a Kitchener Rangers. The outgoing Clarkson would soon become a fan favorite. Off the ice, he became a leader in volunteer community involvement. On the ice, Clarkson was the prototype agitator, finding countless ways to get under the sizing players. He also displayed a nice touch around the net, and it was David Clarkson who would score the final goal of the Canadian junior hockey season seven months later.